Good evening and welcome to Women in Film. Please join me in welcoming our host for the evening, writer, comedian, and one of Variety's 10 comedians to watch, Jenny Yang. Good evening, everyone. Give yourselves a round of applause. We are here together. Yes. Uh, so, I have a confession to make. Whenever someone asks me, Jenny, what inspired you to become a comedian? I would never say my mother. I know, I'm in a room filled with like really important people who care about advocating for women and I am so sorry, I'm being a bad feminist. I never said my mother. I would say like my dad or like my two older brothers and a few times like I talk about memorizing the, the Eddie Murphy specials that my much older brothers would let me watch like way too young, you know what I mean? Uh, like just like straight, imagine this face, just eight years old, same face. Just talk about like, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? I'd like to live in your neighborhood someday. When I move in, <laughs> the problem is when I move in. Y'all move away. Listen, eight years old, why? <laughs> Shout out to Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Applause break, thank you. Uh, it wasn't until I had extra time to reflect during the first months of the pandemic that I realized just how funny my mom is. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. One day, after playing 12 straight hours of Animal Crossing, early days pandemic, guys, <laughs> I suddenly remembered this memory of my first job during my senior year of high school. And it was a very cool ma job, FYI, working at Abercrombie & Fitch, don't judge, be nervous, be, be jealous. <laughs> I can still smell the cologne, okay, anyway. Um, I invited the Yang family to come check it out and they rolled deep. So they showed up, you know, not at all looking like the target market. Like, don't get me wrong, my, I love my mom's style. Just imagine her, she's always with the top button, high neck. Just like a swap meet Diane Keaton. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> yeah, I love my mom. So I'm sweating because my mom was a garment worker and she sewed clothes for a living. And I wanted her to like this. So I watched my mom walk around holding her own hand behind her back, you know, the way Asians are trained to do. <laughs> Inspecting all the clothes, right? And so she stops at a pile of nicely folded denim jeans. So I asked her, I was like, so Ma, what do you think? So she pokes at the distressed jeans and goes in. She's like, these jeans are $99? With all those holes, why do white people pay so much money to look poor? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Like my face went hot. She was right, okay, she was right, right? So my mom gave me a perfectly hilarious take on these jeans. And so when I remembered this memory last year during the pandemic, I was like, wait a minute. My mom has always been giving me her hot takes in Chinese, okay? I need to rethink my comedian origin story. My mom basically taught me how to tweet. She did. So listen, I was born in Taiwan and I moved to Los Angeles when I was five years old. And at no point in my childhood did anyone tell me little Asian girls should become stand-up comedians. <laughs> and the primary role model for me being a woman was my mom. She was a shy garment worker sewing collars for two cents a piece who did not speak English and did not drive. Sharing my stories and having a voice as a comedian makes me feel so powerful. Thank you. But I never associated that power with my own mother. That is, until just last year in 2020, when I remembered her roasting those jeans full of holes. <laughs> Love you. 
Thank you. So tonight, we are here to change that, right? It is 2021. To be a woman is to have a story worth telling. To be a woman is to have a voice worth hearing. We are worthy, we are powerful. Thank you. Yes. So take a look around. We are all here because we share the same mission, to change the culture of Hollywood. Do you agree? Yes. So thank you for being here to support women in film. I am honored to be your host tonight. And as a former labor organizer, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we are on a precipice of a potential IATSE strike. <laughs> and that workers deserve dignity, equity, and respect. So, we have an exciting program tonight. I am freaking out at the star power that we have in the room. And we're doing things a little differently this year, okay? So instead of acceptance speeches, all of the Women in Film Crystal Award honorees will sit on stage after they receive their awards to have a conversation about their work. How about that? Yeah? Okay, good. So we will keep things on and popping. Let's have a great night. <laughs> 